Welcome back to AlgeS. Today's question is leak code 54201 matrix. So given an n by n binary matrix mat, return the distance of the nearest zero from each cell. The distance between two adjacent cells is one. So in example one, the output is going to be the exact same as the input because all the values are zero except one. And this one is exactly one distance away from the nearest zero. And in example two, it's gonna be slightly different, right? So we have these zeros, this one right here, its nearest one is one distance away. This one right here, its nearest zero is one distance away. This one right here, its nearest zero is one distance away. And this one right here, because we're using up, down, left, and right as our only directions, is going to be of distance two from its nearest zero. So it can go up, right, or up, left, or left, up, or right, up. So for this, the algorithm we're going to be using is going to include breadth of search because it is asking for the shortest distance to the nearest one. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have a queue and our queue is going to contain all the positions of the zeros, right? Because we want to work out the distance from zero to all values. So let's add all the zeros into the queue. We're going to add their positions. So it's going to be zero, zero for this one. And we're also going to add an extra value here. Now this value is going to be the distance, the distance from the nearest zero. So let's add the rest. So now we've added the zeros positions into the queue. We need to do one last thing before we can start the breadth of search. And that is to update the ones to infinity. And I'll explain why in a second. So when we start this breadth of search, obviously we're going to shift off of queue. Look at the first value. We're going to check four directions, right? So we're going to go up, right, down, and left. And we're only going to push onto queue if the next value is equal to infinity. Right, so as you can see, none of these values are equal to infinity. So we can see this one and we can move on to the next position. So if we go to zero, one, zero, so we shift off of Q, we check this value, we can see that it points to an infinity. So we're going to add this value into Q. So one, one, and the distance to this is going to be updated to one. And we're going to repeat the process. So zero, two, zero, this one doesn't have any neighboring infinities. So we're just going to forget about that one. We go to one zero. So this one right here, as you can see, this is pointing to the infinity we've already added. So we're not going to add that because otherwise this queue is going to get too large, but it is pointing to this one, which we haven't added. So let's add that. And we're going to update the distance here to one again. So that has been seen. We go to one, two, one, two, again, is pointing to this one, which we aren't going to add because it'll just duplicate and make this queue too large. And it's also pointing to this one, which we haven't added. So that's supposed to be two zero. So this is going to be two, two, and we're going to update the distance to one. So we've seen this. Now we shift off of Q, the first value, which is equal to infinity. Now this is why we turned these values into infinity, because we need to make a check, right? We need to check to see whether this value here is greater than our current count, in which case we need to update it, right? So we need to turn this into a one, into the count, which we have here. That way, if we have a huge grid and the value of the count is exponential, we need to always have a value as a placeholder that is always larger. And the only way we can do that is to provide infinity. Right, so we've updated that. We need to check all adjacent values to see whether there is an infinity. And this infinity here, we haven't added into our queue. So we can add that. So two, one, and we need to update the count. So it's going to be one plus one, which is going to be two. So this has now been seen. We can shift off of Q, two, zero, one. So we're looking at this value. Is this greater than the current count? Yes, it is. So we need to update that to the current count, which is one. We check its adjacent values for infinities, which we haven't added into the Q. All of them have been added. So we can say that we've seen this. We shift off of Q, two, two, one. So at this point, is this value infinity greater than the current count? Yes, it is. So we update that to one. We check its neighbors to see if there's any new infinities to add. There's not. So we shift off of Q, is infinity greater than the current count of two? Yes, it is. So we update this to the current count of two. Check its neighbors, nothing to add to Q. We've seen that. Now we exit Q and we can return this board here. So when writing this out, we're going to need a directions array. We're also going to need to initialize a Q to an empty array and we need to loop through the board or the matrix, right? So i is less than mat.length, i++. Plus plus. Or we'll let j equals zero, j is less than mat at zero dot length, j plus plus, so looping through the rows and columns. If 
the value at ij is equal to zero, we're going to push into q its position plus the count of zero. Otherwise, we're going to set that value at ij to equal infinity. Then we can carry out the BFS. So while q dot length is greater than zero, we can extract current x, current y, and the distance. So current x. By shifting off of q, we make the check to see whether infinity is greater than the current distance. So if mat at current x, current y is greater than dist, then we can update that, right? Then we need to loop through each direction from the current point so that x, y of the directions array. Then we need to get the next value of x and y as well as the next distance. So that next x, next y, and we'll call it next val, equal current x plus x, current y plus y, and dist plus one. All right, so we're updating the distance. Then we need to check wherever it's inbound. So if next x is less than zero, or next x is greater than mat.length minus one, or next y is less than zero, or next y is greater than mat at zero dot length minus one, then these are all out of bounds, so we can just continue from this. And the only time we're going to add to Q is if the next value within matrix, so next x, next y, is equal to infinity. So if this is the case, we're going to push into Q, next x, next y, and also next val, which we calculated above, right? So this value is mapped to this. So it's going to be distance plus one, which is added into here. And that should run through. And if we just return mat at the end, give this a run. Okay, great, let's admit it. And there you go.